Part of the problem with molecular profiling today is that it is centralized uh, in fairly remote laboratories. Samples are very limited, and for the uh, number of tests that can be performed on samples, such as uh, lung uh, biopsies or FNAs, uh, there just isn't enough material to do all of the testing that is possible. And also there's poor integration of the data uh, that is oftentimes confusing both to the patients uh, and to the physician. And so at HTG, we're interested in being able to have every lab capable of doing full molecular profiling. Uh, we feel we have tools and techniques that optimize the sample, uh, and also that we can promote personalized therapies uh, and optimize drug selection at the local level. What we use uh, is a nuclease protection assay, um, which is a very accurate way to measure RNA expression uh, using the S1 nuclease. Uh, the assays that we are developing are highly multiplexed. Uh, we are capable of doing over 2,500 different markers at once uh, on a single five micron section. And our technique is completely extraction free. Um, we have proprietary lysis buffer that solubilizes DNA and RNA without any extraction or uh, purification. Uh, this is just an overview of what our chemistry looks like for interfacing with uh, next-gen sequencing. We have um, a, a protection probe that is 50 mirrors in length, uh, optimal for solubilizing from uh, paraffin sections where you do get fragmentation of RNA. We've added uh, a wing on either side and a wingman in order to protect this probe from the S1 nuclease, which chews up uh, single-stranded uh, nucleotides. We capture a target we eliminate excess target and excess probe by uh, an S1 nuclease digestion. Uh, we use heat and base to hydrolyze RNA. And then we're able to, through a simple PCR step, add uh, tags for sample identification and also adapters for either an Illumina sequencer or an ion torrent sequencer. And then these, the, the library gets cleaned up, it gets pooled and concentrated, and it's ready to go uh, on a next-gen sequencer. This is just an overview of the workflow, uh, where sample prep, again, we're able to work not just with FFPE, but also uh, with frozen tissue, plasma, serum, cell lines, uh, and PAX gene samples. These are solubilized in the lysis buffer, there is an automated uh, step now in our uh, processor for the nuclease protection assay. And then, as I said, a quick PCR step to add the appropriate adapters uh, and tags for identification, and then uh, next-gen sequencing. We also have, uh, as part of our host system, a data analysis parser that is able to quickly, within 15 or 20 minutes, give you data back on what sequences and what targets were present uh, in that sample. So we have now on the market a microRNA uh, assay that uh, looks at approximately uh, 2,200 uh, human microRNAs. It's compatible, as I said, with both the Illumina and the ion torrent platforms and works with a variety uh, of different sample types. The assay is uh, very reproducible. Uh, this shows uh, matching frozen versus uh, FFPE lysate, both prepared in our buffer, uh, with very good correlation of expression between the two samples. And the same with uh, RNA that may have been extracted from FFPE or where there was no extraction, again, just lysis uh, using our lysis buffer, and good correlation uh, between expression of the microRNAs. The assay is uh, exceptionally reproducible. Here you're looking at uh, technical triplicates uh, uh, on the platform, and then day-to-day -day re reproducibility is also uh, very, very high. As I said, we're able to work with very small amounts of tissue. This is exceptionally important for uh, being able to look at lung samples. Uh, we can work with a single uh, tissue microarray core or with a single five micron uh, needle core biopsy or a fine needle aspirate that has approximately 1,000 cells in it. Right now, we uh, have in development a lung fusion assay uh, that will multiplex and look at uh, ALK, ROS, RET, and NTRAC uh, gene rearrangements. And we have two strategies for being able to detect these arrangements. 
We're looking at the five prime to three prime ratios, but we also have developed probes that span across all of the known fusion junctions. Uh, this assay also has probes in it uh, where we can measure the uh, expression of HER2 insertions, the three, six, or nine base insertions. Uh, uh, this outlines, again, the strategy where we've developed a series of probes that tile either the five prime or the three prime end of the ALK gene. When there's no rearrangement, there will be equal uh, expression of these two uh, ends of the gene. But when there is a rearrangement, there is an overexpression of the three prime end. And in addition, uh, as confirmation, we also have probes that look at all of the known uh, fusion junctions. So this is some data looking at some very well characterized cell lines, the H3122 cell line. Again, a perturbation in the three prime to five prime ratio and correct identification of the known fusion junction in this cell line, uh, the variant one. Again, here the H2228, uh, uh, a perturbation again of the three prime to five prime ratio, indicating a rearrangement, and also correct identification of the uh, appropriate fusion junction. This assay also works very well on formalin-fixed uh, paraffin-embedded tissue. We actually, in screening a lung cancer array, uh, found uh, a RET rearrangement that we weren't expecting, uh, but was confirmed with the appropriate uh, fusion junction and, again, perturbation of the three prime to five prime ratio. We have not found a case yet with an NTRAC uh, rearrangement, but have been working with a well-characterized cell line, again, being able to readily detect these rearrangements. We also have analytic software uh, that works on our host to give you uh, a printout uh, of the results uh, in graphical form, indicating the ratios either of the, uh, the three prime and five prime uh, relationships, and also uh, a similar printout for a readout for looking at the uh, specific fusion junctions for these different rearrangements. As I said, this assay also contains probes in it for being able to look at the HER2 insertions. Uh, and again, here's a well-characterized cell line that has a three-base HER2 insertion and then some wild types where uh, you don't detect the, uh, the, the HER2 insertion with our probes. Um, we have a variety of different assays that are in development in addition to the lung fusions. We have a uh, pan-oncology uh, array that looks at more than 2,500 messenger RNAs that are expressed uh, within the on oncology uh, genome, uh, also included in there immuno-oncology markers and markers for looking at FGFR and the HER2 family. Uh, as I said, this has over 2,500 different genes in it. Uh, we look at a variety of different pathways, including drug targets, and also there are histological markers in there to confirm that you do have the right tissue that you're looking at at lung cancer, if you expect there to be lung cancer cells in there, also for being able to profile if it's a breast tumor uh, or a lymphoma, the, the histological markers that are usually expressed in those tumors. This is just an example of the, some of the data that we've generated uh, looking at either an ovarian cancer with overexpression of estrogen receptor and MYC, uh, a melanoma uh, where there was FGFR1 overexpression and uh, this was also a CKIT positive, and a breast cancer with overexpression of HER2 uh, and also MYC. And also you can see here's uh, the immunotherapy markers that we're able to look at in these different tumors. As we move forward, uh, what's also in development uh, is being able to look at the heme uh, gene rearrangements and other solid tumor gene rearrangements. Uh, and we are moving forward with developing both RNA and DNA assays for being able to look at mutations, uh, again, within a single five micron tissue section.